Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the PVM Hub. If you're unfamiliar with the series, these are a set of beginner-friendly revolution guides geared towards teaching you the basics of PVM. These guides will not be optimal, but simply a good starting point for those wanting to learn bossing. If you end up enjoying the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you enjoy more than one of my videos, please consider subscribing. I upload videos every Monday and Friday, and I stream casually on Monday nights. With that out of the way, let's get into today's boss, the Saren shapeshifter himself, Pelweir. Located in the southeast of the Heart of Gilinor, Helwyr is the third of four God Wars Dungeon 2 generals we'll be looking at in this series. His biggest draws are the tier 85 wand and orb he drops, as well as the Crest of Saren, which can be used to make the Anima Core of Saren armor set. As always, this guide will be broken up into a few different sections, all timestamped in the description. They will be the recommendations and requirements, setting up your revolution bar, the important facts and mechanics of the fight, and then a full fight breakdown. Looking at requirements, Hellweir requires that you have 80 magic to enter the boss arena, and you'll need 40 kill count to start a boss instance. If you're unfamiliar with how kill count works in God Wars Dungeon 2, here's a quick rundown. Kill count will not deplete when you leave a dungeon, and you can store up to 200 per boss. Each monster you kill will add to a combo counter, and if you manage to kill a second creature before the combo depletes, you can earn more than one kill count per creature. This stacks up to a maximum of 3 per kill when your combo reaches 300%. If you ever don't kill a creature before the bar runs out, it will reset back down to 100. In terms of recommendations, for this boss we will be using magic. Either two hand or dual wield is fine, however for my kills I will be using dual wield. You will want 80 magic and 65 defense at a minimum, with 70 defense being better along with 70 prayer to unlock augury. Summoning may not be required at all, depending on your level of confidence, however if you want a safety net to finish the kill, I'd recommend either 53 for a spirit terror bird, or 67 for a war tortoise. For gear and supplies, you'll want around 1 mil. A shield will be required for this method, so if you're not comfortable with shield switching, I'll touch briefly on it in a moment, but if you'd like more detail, check out my vindictive video through the time card in the top right. For my setup, I'll be using superior skeletal armor, an abyssal wand and orb, a Zamorak cape from the mage arena, and a seer's ring. Use the highest level spell that you can and set it to auto cast. In my inventory, I'm bringing a super magic potion, a super defense potion, a weapon poison plus plus plus, two prayer potions, a shield, and the rest of my inventory is full of food. Other recommendations would be completing the Tales of the God Wars mini quest in order to earn some extra reputation in a faction of your choice. Earning more reputation will allow you to lower the drop rate of the boss's rare drops, and it will be super helpful if you're planning on making money here. In terms of auras, I would suggest any of the following. Maniacal, Dark Magic, Runic Accuracy, or Penance. Now let's take a look at your Revolution Bar. If you're unfamiliar with what Revolution is, it's a system in RuneScape that will automatically use your abilities for you from left to right. To take advantage of that, we'll be putting our strongest abilities for this left to be used the most often, weaving in our strongest threshold abilities which require 50% adrenaline. On screen is a bar suggested by the PVM Encyclopedia, and below that is a bar that is slightly different that I'll be using this video. The bar is pretty much the same, but I have removed any expensive or difficult unlocks. From left to right, the bar on top reads Dragon's Breath, Sunshine, Wild Magic, Concentrated Blast, Corruption Blast, Asphyxiate, Combust, Tusca's Wrath, Impact, Rack, Deep Impact, and Detonate, with abilities not in the bar being Tsunami and Metamorphosis. For the bar on the bottom, from left to right, it reads Dragon's Breath, Concentrated Blast, Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, Combust, Chains, Impact, Rack, Deep Impact, and Detonate. For abilities outside of the bar, I would strongly suggest knowing where your Devotion, Resonance, Debilitate, and Freedom abilities are, as well as their hotkeys. If you haven't watched my Vindicta video and don't know what shield switching is, it's when you bind your shield to a hotkey to auto-equip it and then use an ability that requires a shield before switching back to your weapon. In our case, we will be using the ability Resonance, which changes the next damage you take into a heal instead. In my case, I will be using Shift-H to equip my shield, and then H to use Resonance. 
The Hellweir fight is focused around four key defensive abilities, which you will absolutely want to know when to use. These abilities are Resonance, Freedom, Devotion, and Debilitate. In terms of mechanics, Hellweir has four active ones and one passive one. Let's talk about the passive first. Two of Hellweir's abilities cause a passive bleed effect which can be cleansed by using Freedom. We will rely on that heavily to reduce the amount of damage we're taking throughout a fight. The first mechanic that causes a bleed is an attack aptly named You Will Bleed. Hellweir will raise both claws over his head and bring them down on you in a large slash. This attack does heavy melee damage and will cause a bleed on hit. Our strategy for dealing with this is to resonance it and use the large amount of damage as a heal instead. Although the bleed is still applied to you, we won't be using freedom to cleanse it yet. That comes after the second mechanic and the one right after you will bleed. This is a heavy assault attack where he will jump to your current location and deal very accurate constant melee damage while applying a bleed on every hit. Our response to this is to use devotion or debilitate whenever devotion is on cooldown. You can also move away from Hellweir and this attack will stop hitting you, but in my experience it's not as good as just dealing damage. Right after this attack ends, we will want to use freedom to cleanse the bleed. There is one tick of bleed that happens after the animation is finished, so make sure the debuff is counting down before using freedom. After those two mechanics, you're safe from the bleeds for a little bit. His next mechanic is to spawn two wolves to attack you. While they aren't really a threat in terms of damage, they are a threat in terms of messing up your residence ability on the you will bleed attack. Make sure you take them out quickly with either AoE abilities or focusing them down on their own. They have low amounts of HP, so you should be able to deal with them quickly. The final mechanic Hellweir has before recycling back to the beginning is his AoE lockdown ability. Hellweir will howl and cause mushrooms on the floor to grow and give off spores. Being inside their green gas will cause you constant typeless damage and reduce your speed to a walk. If you spend too much time inside their area, you will be stunned for 3 seconds. Either surge or walk out of the area as soon as you can, and if they don't spawn on you, then don't worry about it. If you're worried about being stunned, use your anticipation ability and keep moving. This will stop you from being stunned and reduce the damage you take by 10% while escaping. Now that you know what the mechanics are, let's see how this would look in a real fight. Hellweir has three auto attacks in between each of his mechanics, but only two of them have animations. Count the two attack animations to know when to be ready. At the start of the fight, Hellweir will start with his AoE spores. Make sure you walk out of their effect and count how many attacks you see. After he does this, he will do the You Will Bleed. Resonance this with your shield switch that we talked about earlier and continue to DPS. After you see the first attack animation from Hellweir, use Devotion and get ready for him to move. He will pounce on you and your Devotion will reduce all of his damage to 1. Once the attack is over and you see the bleed debuff count down, use Freedom to cleanse the bleed and be ready to use your AoEs. After two more attack animations, Hellweir will call his wolves and this is the time you use your AoEs to clear them. Focus them down if they still have health afterwards. Once the wolves are dealt with, be ready for the mushrooms again as he will still be attacking you while the wolves are up. Two attack animations after the wolves, he will howl and a number of mushrooms will raise up, causing AoEs. Simply walk or surge out of the way and continue to attack. Here he will do two more attack animations and then repeat back to the top of the list with the you will bleed. For the second cycle through the mechanics, you will do everything the exact same except you will use debilitate on his rushdown instead of devotion as it will still be on cooldown. With all that out of the way, let's look at a full kill. Starting from War's Retreat, I teleport to Alcarid and head south down towards the Shanty Pass. I pass through and talk to the Rug Merchant, who can take me to Narda. From there, head southwest to the Heart of Gilinor, and then once you're inside, head southwest again down to the Saren Encampment. Once here, traverse the threshold and enter the portal, and you'll be in your boss instance. At this point, you'd want to activate your potions, that being your super magic, defense, and weapon poison potion. The weapon poison is very important here and will end up doing a lot of damage for you. Starting the fight, I pray melee and put on augury, and the first thing Hellweir does is spawn the green mushroom clouds. After that, so you will bleed. I move away from this one, as I haven't lost any health, and I don't need to resonance. For the rushdown, I use devotion, and I keep on attacking him. Once the rushdown ends, I use freedom and cleanse the bleed. From here, I'm waiting for the wolves to spawn so that I can target them and use my AoE abilities. Using chains and fire breath, as well as detonate, I take care of them easily and move on to the next phase. The green gas raises up again, and I count the auto attacks to be ready for a you will bleed. Here I shield switch and get the resonance off and heal up about 2000 HP. 
I continue DPSing and wait for the rushdown attack. On the second phase, I use Debilitate, but it splashes, so I run away to the north to leave the attack's area. After this, I use Freedom to cleanse the bleed and continue auto-attacking. The wolves come in one more time, I focus them down immediately, and try my best to get back on Hellweir as soon as possible. The mushrooms spawn on top of me, so I simply walk out of the way and re-attack the boss. I'm getting ready for another UO bleed, to resonance it and get a heal. My devotion is now back off of cooldown, so when he starts his next rushdown attack, I will activate it right away. It's a rinse and repeat from this point, so I'm going to speed up the kill a little bit to make it go a little faster. The total kill time for this was just around 4.5 minutes. It's important to recognize that I'm resonancing every you will bleed attack, and I'm alternating between using devotion and debilitate on the rushdowns. After that, I'm not focusing too much on DPSing the boss when other mechanics are up, but I make sure that I don't die. I did try and do this with lower requirements, but unfortunately I really wasn't able to. Hellweir is pretty tanky, and you don't get to focus on the entire time, so you lose a lot of DPS in the long run. This is the lowest gear that I was able to consistently get kills at. It is interesting to know that you can move away from both the Evil Bleed attack and the Rushdown attack, but sometimes you're not so lucky and they'll hit you from a very far distance. Be careful when you're doing that, and make sure you still have enough health to tank the hit, even if you move away far enough. Whenever your debilitate splashes on Hellweir, feel free to move away from his attack or surge away entirely. This will get you out of his range of danger and you can just reset. You can see Hellweir is about to go down, but I still manage to focus on all the mechanics and I don't get greedy and try and finish him early. As if you leave up the wolves, they have a chance to snipe your resonance and he'll do a lot of damage. As Hellweir goes down, I get myself a nice 850k drop, which pretty much pays for our whole setup. But with that, we have now taken down 3 of the 4 God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses, and we can now retune a portal at Wars Retreat, and get teleported directly here the next time. You do still have an hour instance, so get back there and get some more kills. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider hitting the like button, and if you like more than one of my videos, please consider subscribing. If you're watching this the day it comes out, I'm currently live streaming on Twitch, and every new follow will make me do a PVM challenge. Come stop by and check it out, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Zingy out.